ambition with the cut scenes is to make every single scene interesting enough in itself as something that the player would want to see. You can watch them, you get like an introduction to the level, you understand the characters a little bit more and then you go on with the game. In a game like Hitman where there is so much gameplay, there is so much within the game mechanics to challenge the players, the cutscenes also becomes a break between those kind of challenging gameplay moments. Damn it! Mr. Dexter is not someone that you want to mess with. I think cutscenes are getting better and better. They're actually much, much better at using the language of cinematography and story, like movie storytelling and making compelling stories and characters. And this is just a natural evolution in games to, to lean on what we've learned from cinema. We're actually treating it like a classical movie. We're trying always to have like these, you know, really slow dolly moves and shooting from outside the doorway into the room and trying to have this like subtle treatment of it and it actually works really well. We have like an awesome team of animators and environment artists and lighting and comping and the composers and sound designers. I mean a lot of people are working really hard on making them. Hey, what is it worth to you? Name your price. If they um, convey a sense of motivation to play the game um, and we've taken a lot of care to add that to Hitman Absolution um, it's, it's all well and good to be given a task to go and you have to take out a certain target, but if you can apply an emotional reason or, or a really solid motivation to do that, it just makes it more enjoyable and a lot more fun to play. <laughs> now listen to the city. <laughs> if anyone mentions a girl, you know what to do. I'll call you. We started out wanting to do emotion capture and then do voice acting separately and kind of combine yeah, it. This is a classical way, at least for us, to, to produce cutscenes. But we were allowed to hire real professional Hollywood actors and do the performance capture, which is basically doing motion capture, facial capture, and voice at the same time. Mr. Travis, you know this is my prayer time. This definitely reminded me of making literally a motion picture. And, and that, it's like, very beautiful, very clear, and, and I think that it's a wonderful aspect that, they, that they've added to the video game. The basics of motion capture is that we have a series of cameras placed around a room and they record optically these little markers that are placed on, on actors. And uh, it triangulates the data in the space and records movement and we cover the actors with all of these and we can tell where their arms and legs and torsos are in space. And that gets applied to the skeletons of the characters. Where performance capture comes in is similar, but on a far more subtle level. We had a helmet-mounted camera and used that as reference for keyframing. If you have to marker up the face, there's a lot of micro movements that get captured, um, and that goes through a similar process. But it usually requires far more cameras to pick up the smaller dots and, and the smaller ranges of movement. Also with ours, it required a soundproof studio, which Giant had, where we shot, so we could have the actors' voices synced up with their movement and just get a more believable performance out of them. That was really important to us. Well, I always describe uh, motion capture to people as the most natural performance an actor will ever have in the most unnatural environment. Because you're never having to cheat to camera. You're never having to cheat to a light. You're never having to worry about a camera over the shoulder. They don't have to worry about hair, makeup, lighting, wardrobe, nothing. All they're having to worry about is true performance. We found him. Okay, people, listen up. I'm giving a green light on this operation. I want 47's head on a platter in front of me ASAP. The only way I can describe it is, yeah, you got the 360 because the cameras are everywhere. But you also have this monkey suit on and this silly hat with a camera sitting in front of your face. And so to, to the focus level that it takes is uh, unique within itself playing a lot of uh, technology that you're pretending is not there. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole other thing that takes some adjusting to get to. For example, just a simple thing, like, see this thing right in front of your face? It's very hard to focus on the other actor if that's there, and like, this character smokes. So just technically, you can't bring a cigarette up because you smack into that camera, so you have to find a way that looks cool and goes in there and does it. So it was challenging. The actors did have a lot of good suggestions and they would say this feels like out of character and we'd be like that's true and we had a lot back and forth. So we spent quite a bit of time on working with their voices and getting 
No like getting a little deeper into the characters, like giving them some layers to the performances. The physicality and the origin of it is very much on the actor's shoulders, but from that point on, the animator's involvement in it shouldn't be really sold short. They add a huge amount of emotion and of physicality and everything to the scene. Wait. Mm, I heard you. You want me to snatch some chick? The man's gonna call you, tell you how to find her. And there's a convergence where the, the line between cutscene and gameplay is blurring. And it's a, it's a major goal for a lot of AAA games is to, to have it as one fluid experience and not take the user out of the gameplay and really immerse them in the story and the characters and the universe that we've created. My name is Marsha Thomason and I play Diana. <laughs> Who is Diana indeed? Diana is um, Hitman's um, only true uh, human contact. Like they, they've uh, known each other an extremely long time and she is um, what Q is to James Bond in the Hitman world. So she um, sets the assignments, you know, tells him where to go, who to kill, that kind of thing. I thought it was going to be very restricting to have the camera in front of my face, but it's amazing how quickly you get used to it. And there's something actually very freeing about it because, you know, there is no set really, you know, we're, we're just on uh, wooden apple boxes or whatever. And you really kind of have the freedom to just try anything, to just see what happens, you know. And um, Jamie, our director, one of his notes was, you know, just amp it up just a smidge from reality. So you get to do that, which is really fun. I had a little look at the monitors. It was a bit, I kept doing this and watching the monitor doing what I was doing, which was really fun. Um, but for the most part, I just played the scenes. I don't want to get too into all of that. But it's fascinating that I'm in this suit, you know, moving around and there is kind of a, a mock me. It's great. Money, money, money! <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I actually was making a joke because um, the show I've been doing the last couple of years, White Collar, my character on that is named Diana. So I took it because I'm really just playing Dianas for the next five years, is kind of the thing. But no, I was aware of the Hitman series. Um, I love video games. I like to play Grand Theft Auto, uh, Little Big Planet, Mario. So it was fun. Like, I'm going to have such a good time actually getting to play a game that I'm involved with. So I was aware of the brand and I knew that it was a pretty prestigious project. Yeah, um, when I arrived this morning, I don't know, I think I was kind of open. I knew it was going to be very different and otherworldly. But I had a scene today um, in a bathroom with a shower. And there's a shower curtain and I, and whatever, I have to interact with the shower curtain. And I wondered, will there really be a shower curtain? I thought at least I would get that. But no, it's, you know, it's all make-believe. The shower curtain is in front of you. It's really like, it takes it really back to basics. Like being in my bedroom at home, making theater. You know what really impressed me um, with, well, first of all, I was impressed to receive a script like a full script for a video game. And I just, the, the, the level, the standard um, of what they're producing, of what they've written, it really is impressive and, and a medium that, you know, I think a lot of people are snobbish about gamers and gaming and, and the quality, it's mindless violence. Well, I disagree because I really think there's true artistry involved in what they do, uh, both on the animation side and in the writing. I was really, really impressed. I'm really looking forward to playing it. I've always wanted to be a redhead, so this works out really well. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Vivica Fox, and I played the head nun in Hitman 5. The head nun, she's a bad bitch. I love it. And I was really happy to play her. And, and basically I um, run a team of assassins and I've been hired to kill the hitman. So that was real fun to be with my girls and 
get off a big old yellow bus and go hunt down the hitman. And uh, she, she, she had the girls do a, a lot of the dirty work. So she was kind of like a taskmaster. She put everybody in order, issued out the orders, and if she needed to do the dirty work, she definitely could. I've come to take them down, is all I'm going to tell you. So it's kind of sexy, kind of scary, but uh, I definitely came with my girls, and uh, we're going to take them down. It was really, really fun and, and very physical, but completely different than anything I've ever done before. I mean, I did Kill Bill, and when with the girls, we trained for six months, so I, I was used to getting pushed around, shoved, kicked. If you missed, it's okay, get up, start, do it again. This is one of the first experiences I've ever had of uh, being a character in a video game. But it reminded me of making uh, movies because you get in front of green screen. Um, and, and that element I was very familiar with, so it wasn't foreign to me. But uh, this definitely reminded me of making literally a motion picture. And that it's very beautiful, very clear. And, and I think that it's a wonderful aspect that, they, that they've added to the video game. Absolutely. I cannot wait to add this to my repertoire. I mean, I think, you know, it's just so wonderful that you can say, wow, I've been immortalized in a video game. Like, that's cool. Like, years from now, I can always pull this up and no matter what shape I am at that time of life, I can go, see there, I was a bad bitch. <laughs> I was a kick butt chick and I'll forever be here, a part of the Hitman series. So, very honored. My name is Powers Booth and I play uh, Travis. My name is Shannon Sossman and I play the character of Jade in Hitman 5. He's the uh, head of some sort of super agency that we do all kinds of wonderful and dastardly things. <laughs> She's the secretary of Travis, who runs the agency that employs Hitman. And she just wants to get to the top no matter what, so she's kind of got her own plans, I think. And maybe doesn't always agree with the way Travis does things. Maybe Travis is a little bit more emotional or something. <laughs> I must say, that at least for the first half day that I shot, I felt like, what the hell have I got myself into? This is just bizarre because it's not like anything else. And uh, the only way I can describe it is, yeah, you got the 360 because the cameras are everywhere, but you also have this monkey suit on and this silly hat with a camera sitting in front of your face. I've played these games. I, I play them more often than I like to admit. Um, starting way back before Donkey Kong and all that stuff. So to see them evolved, and then in my mind to have an image of what is fun to me when I play, besides just the technique and everything. I mean, I want the performance to be a little better than anything that I've seen and all this other kind of stuff. But at the same time, there's something ironic about these characters in that you don't want them quite to be real. So in certain instances, when they are over the top, you like it even more, you know. It's a whole other thing that takes some adjusting to get to. For example, just a simple thing, like, see this thing right in front of your face? It's very hard to focus on the other actor if that's there and like this character smokes. So just technically, you can't bring a cigarette up because you smack into that camera, so you have to find a way that looks cool and goes in there and does it. So it was challenging. It was, everything was exactly the same. It was, it was really interesting to try to do really weird things with like uh, intricacies to the movement just to see if it would pick it up, like something really weird or quirky. And it did, it picked it up. And it looked, it, it, everything looked the same, and I would turn around and I would twirl around. The only thing that was different was that she had bigger boobs. So every, you know, I was moving my arms and I was moving things around and I would turn and then just, I would turn and then the screen there was, that was the only thing that was different. So they made my boobs bigger. 
and my butt smaller. What's well, similar in many ways is, I mean, as far as uh, the, the, the reality of the scenes and those kind of things, but uh, as much as anything, they know the technology. They know, uh, for example, first day I had a lot of questions about like, okay, uh, where's this wall? And uh, I'm going up these stairs, why and to what? And uh, what are they really? You know, those kinds of things. And to watch them do the set in a box would suddenly become, you see it over there, it's a full-fledged desk with a chair and computers on it and all this kind of stuff. And, and uh, it was bizarre, frankly, to, 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 to see that and, and, uh, and how good it looked at the end of the day when, when it went on there. I recall, Tuan and I, when we were uh, getting to the hotel here, we were looking at the, uh, the plans for the day and we saw that, okay, there was a carpenter, there, was guys doing, uh, there were guys doing walls and all these weird things happening and we were like, what's that all about? And then when we came, we could see that the, you know, they did the cinema in the basement with the you know, new carpets, new floors, a very beautiful uh, printout of, uh, of Hitman, obviously, of 1847. And, and then obviously when we go here to the suites there, we have a, a red suite and a black suite and it's super stylish with the... Uh, bathtubs and uh, the rubber ducks and everything, it's, uh, it's really a big, uh, big effort there. It's really the best kind of event we've had so far. It's looking extremely promising. I think they did a great job, John and the guys, to, to dress the whole thing up and make it look... It's very classy and it's, uh, it fits the game very well with, uh, with everything, all the imagery and uh, yeah, I think the feeling you get from this venue. I, I hope that the journalists will really pick up on that and kind of be, uh, be excited and kind of feel that it's somehow part of the, of the game world. It's a big day for us. We are coming back after our E3 presentations and now we're in London showing off the orphanage code to a lot of people from the press and we're obviously very excited about this. Hoping for them to really see that the, the cinematic opening we, wanted, we showed back in Los Angeles is not just a fluke, it's actually how the game is. It's very cinematic, right? And it's uh, full of choice. So that's what we're hoping they take away from this, that it's reaffirming the abilities of 47 and that it is a very cinematic game we're building. Absolution has a far more personal story than the previous games. So, and this is something that's been, it's been tough for us to work with because it's a different way of telling a story than, uh, than, than we classically did. So also, the team has been learning a lot uh, during the years to how to kind of integrate the story within the levels without compromising the, the, the player choice. For me, it's really important that they, that they see just how much you can do as 1847 this time around, which is why we built a, a playthrough where that is actually two playthroughs. First one where we play a more professional style, and then one where we play a more free style where we end up killing quite a few people. And it's all kind of to show that the arsenal is now uh, kind of full circle, it's well-rounded. I think we are this time able to cater for all sorts of play styles and then make it the player's choice when to, uh, to change it. Or if, the, if you screw up a little bit and you have to change your, your gear, you can do that right, and, uh, and clean up your mess. It's been the backbone of IO ever since it started. It was uh, the, the technology that was made for the first Hitman game also laid the foundation for every other game we did up until this point. So it's only now that we actually got the opportunity to make completely new technology from scratch, which is called Glacier 2, which is what's powering uh, Absolution. And it's made completely in fusion with the game design. So everything that the mechanics needs and the, and the art direction and the sound needs, it's been made custom for this game. So we're very excited about that. I mean, for us working at I.O., working on a Hitman game is uh, obviously quite an honor. It's, it's the franchise that started out the studio, and uh, Absolution is going to be the biggest Hitman title yet. It's going to be the biggest title we ever produced at I.O., so obviously on a personal level it's, it's a thrill to work on, right? And a lot of people are very uh, excited about this. Yeah.
exciting. Very, very many people to meet, and it seems like we have a good buzz. It's been uh, it's been fantastic. I think it, uh, the journalists they they're generally interested. They come up and they're very excited. I'm very happy with the day, but uh, yeah, yeah. so. I think everyone is. It seems like it paid off. All the hard work. Yeah. The idea for Hitman Contracts actually comes from seeing what the fans have done with our older games. They have created any number of, of really, really impressive uh, alternate hits, taking out clowns in interesting ways or really showing off what the game mechanics can do. In many ways, uh, uh, things that we didn't expect were even possible within the game, and, and they've done it. The Hitman games have always been about this dark creativity, I will, because the subject matter is dark, right? You are an assassin and you're killing people. And people always found different ways of doing it, new ways of doing it, and they always found, uh, found it fun to, uh, to challenge each other, talk about what did you do in this specific level, what, did, uh, what, what approach did you take. And this is uh, very much what fuels Contract. The fact that the Hitman Absolution is super replayable on a lot of levels, uh, which way you take, who you kill, what you do, what disguise you wear, what weapons you use, all that stuff easily transcends into contracts and it's actually the base of what makes that game mode so fun. You play to create. When we were looking at what to do in Hitman Absolution as a supplement to the story, we talked about how could we enable fans to do that kind of thing and make it part of the game experience. You create contracts by playing the game, you mark your targets and you take them out and you move through the levels, creating the rules as you go. Contracts is very much about creativity. You have to do it yourself. It's not only so we know that it's actually doable, but it's also a way for you to express your skill or your style while doing the contract. And then after you're done, you will uh, share this contract, you can name it, and then you put it on our servers and your friends and everyone else is uh, able to play them. So playing through the game and creating the contract as you go um, takes the noble art of assassination and makes it into something that actually becomes a competitive sport. So it's the first time you can really go heads up with uh, some other players, right? By doing the contracts or by saying to your friends, okay, I challenge you guys, we take this contract uh, and then we see who of us is the best assassin, who gets the highest score. And that actually adds a new element to the game as well. So we can replay it, not only just to express creativity, but also to compete and show kind of who's the best. We have had a lot of fans request on forums this sandbox kill tool, if you will. All the previous Hitman games have been these sandboxes where you actually kill people however you want. And what they said is, why are we not able to do that? Why can't we pick the targets? And that's exactly what we're doing in Contracts. We're giving you the ability to go into a level and select the targets you want to kill, basically. And doing so, you actually change how that level plays, what it's about, what is the pacing, which route do you take. All that is pretty much defined by what targets you, you choose for other players to try to, uh, to kill. And that is really what makes contracts uh, unique. Well, we're here in Cologne to show off the last missing piece of the Hidden Map Solution to the press, which is uh, contracts mode. There's a lot of journalists in here right now. I think 270 journalists from across the world. So pretty exciting. It's super exciting for us. This is we believe what we call the exciter of the project. Right, uh, 10 4. Uh, someone bring me the blueprints for this place, for Christ's sake. You always need something new and exciting when you release a game that will make people talk about it. And we've been showing off things that are more or less like the old Hitman games, just kind of expand upon everything. But this is something that is completely new and hopefully something that will knock their socks off. Over the campaign, we always think, yeah, when we get online questions, H47 works alone, H47 works alone. But now we sort of lift that last way. It's like, hey guys, you can play online, you can compete together, and you're gonna have a great time. It went uh, very, very well. It uh, kind of exceeded our expectations. I think people got a lot to take away. It was a very tight and very, you know, condensed presentation. People loved it. I talked to a lot of guys right now and they're really surprised actually, like, this is something new, this is something fresh. We really want to play that, so couldn't be better. And that's why we kept it, you know, as the last puzzle piece to add it on top of what's already awesome, right? So we're in a good spot right now and I'm very happy about it. E3 means a lot for any game that is being presented here, but it means especially a lot for uh, Hitman Absolution. 
We're here because it's uh, the biggest show in the uh, industry calendar and uh, it's going to define how successful we really will be. For a game like Hitman, it's really critical for us to be exposed and uh, to, to get a lot of, uh, of coverage from the game because it's such a big project. We have several theatres where Square Enix is presenting and uh, one of the main theatres is uh, the Hitman Absolution Theatre where we will be showing exclusively behind closed door the Streets of Hope demo. Then uh, on the floor People can of course play the King of Chinatown level and uh, we'll also have access to the Sniper Challenge. And in the back we have uh, the interview rooms where uh, we can have talk to journalists with a bit more privacy because here on the floor during the show it gets really noisy. We think meticulously about everything, you know, right down to the, the screen settings on the television, you know, the audio levels in the headphones, the branding on the headphones, I mean you've seen these bad boys with uh, kind of branding on both sides, you know, make a good impression. You know, yeah, we think of everything. Outside of the show, which I know is probably more hard for people to see, but we have, you know, flags and banners and big posters, you know, the full staircase. You know, really when you come to LA this year, you know, Hitman really stands out as being the stellar title that it is. Oh, the next few days are going to be uh, extremely packed with interviews and uh, presenting the code to uh, journalists and uh, it, will be, it will be very intense. I have a little office in the back of the booth where I think I'll be spending most of my time in here. I won't be seeing any of the, of the glitter on the floor. <laughs> you know, myself and Nick are going to be in a the theatre presenting. We've got Dan and, and Travis working the pods, Sven running PR. You know, we'll all probably do multiple roles over the day as well. I'm going to do Tons of live shows, IGN, Machinima, etc. Obviously, just to talk about our new game. Uh, I'm really, really excited about that. Well, it really feels overwhelming as a developer coming here and seeing your game, getting that kind of exposure as like, like a once in a lifetime experience for us. We have a lot of content and it's a very high quality and uh, it has everything from from the classic uh, gameplay elements to the more uh, modern aspects that we try to introduce into the series. And uh, it's, I think it's a complete package that will uh, cater to many different uh, desires from the audience. It's really, really cool stuff. I'm really, really excited, definitely. I think so, yeah. It's a little bit new, a little bit more sleek. And yeah, it's great. This is my first time playing Hitman, so pretty impressed. I hope that they'll get the true Hitman experience, they'll get a sense of the open world, the choices, the different things you can do, the fact that you can approach uh, situations in multiple ways, you can create distractions or accident kills and all these different kinds of things. Everything that is core Hitman, but also evolved in a way, so we're showing off a lot of the new features for Instinct and so on. The world is full of details, that's what I like, first of all. And I'm a huge Hitman fan, of, of course. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited about it. It's great, man. Awesome. You like it? Yes, I love it. I like it a lot. It's, there's a lot of attention to detail in the game. And uh, I love the Hitman series, it's really classy, but it, it's playing really well so far. Game Informer, best of show. About to tweet it out to the world. I think they look at our product and I think they're blown away by the sort of depth and scale of what you can do with our game. Um, you know, we're showing so much here, so many different things, different areas, levels, moments, checkpoints. You know, there really is such a breadth of Hitman here. It's just, it's such a relief to be here finally. We've been working, we've been working so much for this to happen and uh, to see it here, it feels really good. From what we've seen, it's, it's awesome. From uh, my presentations, when I can see people's reactions, they laugh at all the right points, and they just they seem like they have fun, right? And uh, when you talk to people at the pods, obviously they're enjoying it too. So I think it's I think it's great. I think we're outdoing ourselves compared to last year, actually. And also giving people hands-on is actually a good way of proving the gameplay. And everyone, when they saw their game last year, they were thinking, yeah, yeah, it looks kind of like a Hitman game, but 
Is it very directed? Uh, you know, is this exactly what we want? We've spent a good amount of time trying to convince them that it is, and now that they're getting hands on, everyone is thinking, that's it, this is Hitman, this is what I want.